Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope you're all doing well. This is my Finishing the Bible in One Year Project, and we're on day 264, and today is the last day of First Chronicles. So we'll be reading chapters 20 and 29, last day of First Chronicles, but we will be starting Second Chronicles tomorrow. So, if you consider that Chronicles used to be one giant book, then we're basically at the halfway point instead of being at the end of First Chronicles. So, there's two chapters today, it'll be kind of short, but um, yeah, First Chronicles 28, let's just get started and uh, get to our devotion here. Alright, David, David's address about the temple. 28 verse 1, And David assembled all the princes of Israel, and the princes of the tribes, and of the captains of the companies that ministered to the kings the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and the captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over the substance in possession of the king, and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. And David the king stood up his feet, up upon his feet, and said, Hear me, my brethren, and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord or Jehovah and for the footstool of our God or Elohim and had made ready for the building but Elohim said unto me thou shalt not build an house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood albeit Jehovah Elohim of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever for he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler and the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over Israel. And of all my sons, for Jehovah hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of Jehovah over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of Jehovah, and in the audience of our Elohim, keep and seek for all the commandments of Jehovah, your Elohim, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou, Elohim of thy father, the Elohim, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind, for Jehovah searcheth all hearts and understandeth all imaginations of the hearts of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for Jehovah hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and the treasures thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner parlors thereof and of the place of the mercy seat and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of Jehovah and of all the chambers round about and of the treasuries of the house of Elohim and of the treasuries of the dedicated things also for the courses of the priests and the Levites and for all the work of the service of the house of Jehovah, and for all the vessels of the service in the house of Jehovah. He gave of gold by weight for things of gold, for all instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service. Even the weight of the candlesticks of gold, and for the lamps of gold by weight for every candlestick and for lamps thereof, and for the candlesticks of silver by weight, both for the candlestick and also for the lamps thereof, according to the use of every candlestick. And by weight he gave gold for the tables of shewbread and for every table, and likewise silver for the tables of silver, also pure gold for the flesh hooks and the bowls and the cups, and for the golden basins he gave gold by weight for every basin, and likewise silver by weight for every basin of silver. And for the altar of incense refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of Jehovah. All this, said David, Jehovah made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern. And David said to Solomon and his son, Be strong and of a good courage, and do it. 
Fear not, nor be dismayed, for Jehovah Elohim, even my Elohim, will be with thee. He will not fear thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of Jehovah. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of Elohim, and there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man for any manner of service. Also the princes and all the people will be holy at thy commandment. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone Elohim hath chosen, it is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for Jehovah Elohim. I have prepared with all my might for the house of my Elohim the gold for the things to be made of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, and the iron for the things of iron, the wood for the things of wood, onyx stones and stones to be set, glistering stones and divers colors, and all manners of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my Elohim, I have mine own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my Elohim, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the house withal. The gold for things of gold, and silver for things of silver, and all manner of work to be made by the hand hands of artificers and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto Jehovah then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of Elohim of gold five thousand talents and ten thousand drams and of silver ten thousand talents and of brass eighteen thousand talents and one hundred talent thousand talents of iron and they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of Jehovah by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly because of the perfect heart they offered willingly to Jehovah. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Wherefore David blessed Jehovah before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Jehovah Elohim of Israel, our father for ever and ever. Thine, O Jehovah, is thy greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Jehovah, and thou art exalted as head above all. That is good. A good verse, a good reminder that everything in this world is God's. Plain and simple. Everything. Um, our wealth is not ours. The money we get is not ours either. Uh, we are stewards. The Lord makes us steward of money so that way that we use the money wisely for him and for his glory. Um, but yeah, everything is his. Everything. We have no possessions. Uh, they're all the Lord's. So it's a good reminder of that. And a good reminder that even with our possessions... Everything we accumulate here on earth, it doesn't matter. It's all for naught because we can't take any of it with us to heaven or to hell if you don't trust in Jesus Christ. So, a good reminder. All right. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our Elohim, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners. We were all our fathers, our days on earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding. O Jehovah, our Elohim, all this store that we have prepared to build thee and house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. I know also, my Elohim, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Jehovah, Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. 
and give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for which I have made provision. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless Jehovah your Elohim. And all the congregation blessed Jehovah Elohim of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and worshipped Jehovah and the king. May sacrificed sacrifices unto Jehovah, and offered burnt offerings unto Jehovah on the morrow after that day, even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings and sacrifice in abundance for all Israel. Man, can you imagine thousands of animals being sacrificed? Like, just think of how much, like, slaughtering there would have to be. Also, how much food that would be. I mean, I guess there is a lot of people. So. And did eat and drink before Jehovah on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time and anointed him unto Jehovah to be the chief governor and Zadok to be a priest. And Solomon sat on the throne of Jehovah as king instead of David his father and prospered and all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And Jehovah magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been seen on any king before him in Israel. Thus David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years, seven years reigned in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned in Jerusalem. I said this last time I saw this number. It's very interesting. 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem. Isn't that interesting how it's that number, 33? And 33 was the age of Christ. He died. And then seven years he reigned in Hebron. Like, just those numbers. You know, seven is a, is a holy number, essentially. Our God is a God of numbers. And just it's just interesting. I don't know if it means anything. If you know, I'm not saying it does mean anything, but I just think it's interesting that it's those particular numbers. It's very interesting. All right. And he died in good old age, full of days, riches and honor, and Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and the book of Nathan the prophet, and the book of Gad the seer, with all his reign and his might. And the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries. All right, I guess that concludes First Chronicles and the summary of King David. And Second Chronicles will be about guess who? Solomon. And you know how I said that it's a summary. Well, it is a summary, but also there's uh, stuff, and people are like, oh, you could just skip Chronicles. No. Yes, it's a summary, but there's also stuff that they don't say in Samuel and Kings. So there is lots of information, little details that are not said in those books that are said in this book. So don't ever skip, um, in your reading, don't ever skip anything just because it's boring or just because uh, you know it looks like a repeat. Because you can always learn something. Pray. Pray to God and ask Him to help you through the quote unquote boring parts and uh, get you through the rough parts um, I'm not saying that the, reading the Bible is easy because it's not <laughs> I mean if you've seen my videos you know sometimes I myself have trouble with reading and, and uh, some of the words and names and places so it's not easy but it's very rewarding because I look back on it and it's just you know I've learned so much and, and it's helping bring a big picture to everything, helping me understand better by reading the Old Testament. A lot of people say, oh, just skip the Old Testament. I don't suggest skipping the Old Testament. In fact, I really like it. Um, I, I've begun to like it more than what I used to because of how much history there is, biblical history. Um, and I just like learning about that stuff. So. Anyway, here is the daily promise, Acts 10:43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Hmm, interesting. See right there, belief in him. Believe in who? Jesus Christ. Believe, trust, have faith. All this 
and we will get remission of sins. All this we will get the free gift of salvation. All this we will get salvation. Here's the reflection, and I quote, Rejoice in your justified state, you who believe. Even the prophets of old marvel at the proclamation of forgiveness that would be bought to you. Yours is the gift eternal. Yours is the very life of the slain lamb. Your future is assured, and none may thwart your eternal and heavenly gift. Again I say rejoice, believer. Rejoice and go forth in his spirit in all righteousness. End quote. Amen to that. We need to rejoice. If we are truly saved, if we truly believe in Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, that he shed all his blood for us, we believe, we have faith, and we have trust in him, then yeah, we have eternal life. We are a child of God, we have eternal life, and we will live forever in heaven, in bliss, with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, doesn't that sound awesome? i rather trust in him for my sins than trust in myself and go to hell and pay for my own sins. I mean, Jesus Christ already paid the price. All we have to do is accept it. Reach out our hand, take it, and accept it. It's a free gift. All we have to do is accept it. If you don't accept it, we will have to pay for it ourselves in hell. So, I don't want to pay for it in hell. And you know, hell wasn't even created for us. It was created for the de uh, devils, demons, Satan. Satan is devils. Satan is demons. Uh, it was, and his fallen angels as well. It wasn't created for us originally. So why should we have to pay for our sins in hell when Jesus Christ did it for us? We just have to trust in him. Believe in him. We will have everlasting life. So let's pray. Dear Yehovah, our Elohim, our Abba, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that we're able to read your word. I pray you give us discernment so we can rightly divide your word of truth. And I pray that we can learn much and that we can keep everything we read in our hearts and our minds. Thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing, everything that you will do. And I pray in Jesus Christ's precious holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. So guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope you have a good evening, morning, night, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. And trust in Him. And have faith in Him. And you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Thank you again. Bye-bye.